Welcome to MMA Dogs. My name is Hector. This is my dog, Dan. Hi. We are in Las Vegas, the home of the UFC and the mecca of MMA. In our opinion, and we've talked about this uh, before. What do you got, dog? Yeah, we, we both agree on this. Um, they go out there and, and finish a fight early in the first round. But don't get caught speeding. <laughs> don't get caught speeding on this fight. <laughs> They're against a guy who, who just had a, got bit by a dog with rabies or something. For me, it's a do not bet. And uh, betting advice, do not bet. But it's going to be one of those things, guys. I really, I really feel it. It's unanimous. MMA dogs have spoken. Five star. And it's, uh, that's going to be a knockout. Just something to highlight the night. MMADogs.com. MMADawgs.com. Who's ready to make some money? I know we are. If you're ready to consistently profit over and over again, you've come to the right place. Now let's go to my dog, Hector, from America's finest city. Welcome to MMA Dogs. My name is Hector, and as always, thank you for tuning in. A big shout out and a big thank you to all of our clients. We've had a great turnout here, an excellent turnout for UFC 172, and I am beyond excited to share my picks, my bets, my do not bets, my leans, my bet the farms and uh, every which thing you can imagine. So let's get this show on the road, baby. Let's get this party started. Now, uh, something that I've been thinking about, and uh, I've been thinking about it a lot, is that when it comes to betting and picking and predicting and everything that has to do with the UFC and, and, um, and MMA, is that on most cards we're going to have 10 to 13 fights and when you put in the work and you are familiar with the fighters and you watch the fights, you do your tape study, you listen to the interviews, you gather all the information, every single thing you can gather up and you invest a lot of time into it, it is very enticing, it is very uh, tempting to want to bet a fight if you have a lean or if you have like, a, uh, if you're like, oh, this guy's gonna win or, or you know, this girl's gonna win. But you have to stay very, very disciplined. And a lot of you guys may know this, but a lot of you may also not know it or may know it, but don't actually always follow um, that, that strategy. And um, it's very important. It's not. It's not as fun. It's not as like, oh, oh man, I, I, I knew that underdog was going to win. I didn't bet it. I knew it. But when you stay super disciplined, super strict, and really just narrow it down to a few select guys, that's when I really see success and where I really see a path to, to victory, you know, a path to, to winning. And that's what this whole thing is about. It's about winning. It's not about having the, the, the most bets and the most predictions. It's about winning the most and winning at the highest percentage possible. So with that being said, let's get this party kick-started. Uh, first, you never want to bet more than you can afford to lose. Of course, we go into it with the best of intentions, but even, you know, even the best night could be ruined by something so stupid. So never bet more than you can afford to lose. And the second thing is you always want to check your local laws and government. You don't want to piss them off. And then um, third thing is a lot of – I have a ton of respect for every single fighter that steps in the octagon. But my job is to break this thing down and, and really get down to the nitty-gritty. You know, we, we, don't, uh, we don't sit here and, and pick favorites based off who we like or this or that. It's about who has shown a, a track record and who is going to come into the fight and do what they need to do to win. So, here we go. The first fight of the night, the very, very first fight, is going to be a matchup between Williams and Beal. So, let's talk about Williams first. With Williams, we know that we're getting a guy who has a very, very strong wrestling background. He, he wrestled at ASU. Um, in, in MMA, he hasn't really translated that that um, 
that same style, that same wrestling where, you know, he can take you down and, and really work his whole overall game with that wrestling mixed in. Watching him fight, he uh, I'm not really that impressed. You know, he it's his first weight cut to 135. Um, and at the weigh-ins, he looked just, just completely beat, which is expected, but it was a degree further than that. Um, you know, with, with his cardio tank, I mean, it, it's just a, it's just a total do not bet for me. And with Beal, uh, we have a solid, well-rounded guy. And, uh, in this fight, he's going to have to keep the fight to the, uh, keep it on the feet because Williams is going to have a wrestling advantage. But like I said, with Williams, it's not like his wrestling is translated greatly. Like, uh, let's say Cain Velasquez, um, it's not there yet. He's got a lot of work, which is why he's fighting in the 10th fight. So I have zero interest in betting this fight, zero interest in investing in this fight. And, um, and so it's going to be, let me fix this thing. So it's going to be a, a pass, but the pick is going to be Beal and uh, zero, nothing on it. Just total pass, uh, totally, completely. So uh, let's move on to the next fight. Cause Castillo and Brenneman. So with Brenneman, we have a guy who has no chin. Let me see what's going on with this this video here. Let's turn, let me turn up the light a little bit. There we go. All right, so with Brenneman, we got a guy that has zero chin. So his only hope is to use his wrestling. Thankfully for him, wrestling is what got him here. And wrestling is what's going to keep him here if he wants to stay in the UFC. He has good wrestling. But if he strays even for one second away from that game plan, choom, we're going to see Danny Castillo land a, a punch and uh, rock him and then submit him or just finish him with ground and pound. So uh, very limited path to victory for Brenneman here. Very, uh, you know, he's just had to do one thing and wrestle and that that's wrestle his way to a decision. Or, or pray that Casillo gasses and he can somehow finish him in, via submission, but I highly doubt it. So Castillo needs to keep it on the feet. He's got a big advantage there. If he gets taken down, he needs to pop back up, take advantage of, of uh, you know, take advantage of the fact that, that like I said, Brenneman's striking and his chin is just not good. And uh, he doesn't need – Castillo shouldn't get, uh, you know, caught up in the jiu-jitsu game, especially being on the bottom – He'll, he'll lose a decision if he does that. Um, and Castillo has been out-wrestled before, especially the Volkman fight really stood out to me. And uh, it's going to be a do not bet. But the pick definitely will be Castillo in around minus 300. My God, that is unbelievable. So a total pass on Castillo, but he's going to be the pick. And then we have a pair of ladies fighting, and that is Correa or Correa. And Duke, with Cohea, we're getting literally what you know. She trains with the Pitbull brothers, and you can tell. I mean, this little this woman is just a pit bull. I mean, she just comes forward, just just doesn't give a hoot. Just, but for me, that's too sloppy. You know, that's not somebody I want to invest my money in, especially not yet. Um, the the Beal and Williams fight, the Castillo and Brenneman fight. The only one out of those guys who's really proven to me is Castillo. And even then, you know, he's got his weaknesses and his food bars and things. So those aren't fighters we want to invest our money in. You know, hard-earned money. You don't want to be throwing it away on people like that. So with with Cohea, just like I said, she gets sloppy. She hasn't proven anything to me. So why would I, why would I invest my money in her? Uh, it's such an even fight with Duke. With Duke, I see more upside. I do like her ever since the first time I saw her fight. I was very impressed with her. So I am going to pick Duke to win the fight. But with Cohea coming forward the way she does and with Duke not uh, not not having a, a not having comfort, not having a total grasp of how to use her long body, her long limbs, I'm just, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not so eager. I want I want to see her win this fight before I consider her and uh, and like I said I want to be super strict with it. So It'll be Duke for the win, but it'll be a pass on that bet. And now this this fight, I had to use all my willpower to <laughs> to restrict myself from betting it. And that is Gomi versus Valley Flag. Now, in my opinion, Gomi is uh, is done. Just like the guy who fought, uh, I can't remember the name right now because I try to erase these names after the fight, but it's uh, the guy who fought uh, Clay Guida. And... Um, 
you know, that he's in the same boat as that guy, in my opinion. You know, he's had his his better, uh, the crusher, you know, the crusher. He's had his better days behind him. Gomi, I think he's done. And uh, he's fighting a long way away from uh, from Japan. You know, he's a long way from Asia. He's all the way in the east coast of the United States. So that's a big old jet lag for him. And with Valley Flag, a uh, very interesting guy. You know, he he isn't one of those guys that's made it on the scene by having a, a athletic prowess and genetics and speed and this and that. This is a guy who's just a working man, just a guy who's had to go in there and do everything he can to uh, to to fight with these genetic guys, you know, who are who are very talented. So he's just a, a scrappy guy who wins split decisions and just grinds things out. And what's got him here is the fact that he actually listens to his coaches. So he's got excellent coaches uh, in Greg Jackson, and he's just a student of the game. I, I've seen him and Greg Jackson. I've had the pleasure of meeting Greg Jackson, and I've seen the the interactions he has with Valley Flag. And you can tell Valley Flag just looks up to Greg Jackson. That's his uh, that's his his teacher there, his his his, uh, his sensei, and uh, and he respects that. He listens to his corner. So. At nearly plus 200, God, it's so tempting to, to, to put something on Valley Flag. But like I said, uh, just staying super disciplined this this fight card and not not pulling anything. Now, if you want to classify it as a lean or a possible, like, you know, throw something on there, a flyer or whatever you want to call it, a possible win, I, I'm going to pick Valley Flag for the upset via decision. And uh, But if he loses, you know, that, I won't be surprised. So that's why... I am passing on it, you know, just saying, hey, you know what, I'm going to pass it, but uh, but I am going to pick Valley Flag by decision there. Next fight, it's another one. Once again, I had to use willpower to not put it up there and not bet it, and that's uh, Benavidez versus Elliot. Now, with Elliot, we know what we're getting. We're getting a guy who's scrappy, very much like uh, like Valley Flag, but a little bit more gifted, you know, speed. He's, he's got the overall game. Elliot's overall game, but he hasn't taking anyone out that's that's of uh you know important caliber he's hung in there with some guys but nobody at the top like benavidez you know benavidez is number two maybe number three number two in the world and he's a very talented fighter coming off a huge loss i mean this just just a um a heartbreak of a loss for him getting knocked out that way but he looks like he's focused he looks like he's ready to win and he probably will win but with that big old price tag on him, it's a do not bet. Last thing we need is to get caught speeding on, on a guy just coming off a title loss. You know, the biggest goal in the world, the hugest, you know, uh, goal of the title, having the belt, having the belt around. And uh, nope, it didn't happen. So uh, so we're going to pass. But the pick will be Benavidez via decision or maybe, maybe a finish. But... Who knows? It could go to decision, and and uh, and that's a two you do not bet. And uh, the bets are coming. The the bets are coming. We're not gonna pass on everything, but for the next fight, we get to the pay per view. So we got a very interesting matchup. I can't wait for this one. It's gonna be uh, Holloway versus Feely. With Holloway, we get a very 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 tough guy. I mean, this guy has has decent stand up, good stand up. Uh, no ground game yet, and uh, and it's surprising because he's had some time now to work with uh, with, with with some good guys over there in Hawaii, and so um, I would like to see an improvement. Maybe he'll show us this fight, but um, he's fighting a guy who feel in Feely who is training with Faber, who's training with Mendes, who's training with Benavides, um, who's training with Castillo, and. Uh, Dillashaw and I mean all these savages over there Holdsworth and so the 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 amount of improvement that we are going to see out of Feely is is possibly and I believe it will be more than what we've than what we see out of Holloway and uh but the reason I can't bet Feely is because he hasn't proven anything to us yet he hasn't proven anything so why are we going to invest our money into an unproven you know, stock or an unproven product. It's, it just doesn't make sense. So, uh, Feely for the pick, very, very close, 50-50 here. But uh, but Feely will have, if he wants, if he's smart, he will have the advantage to take down Holloway, um, ground and pound, hold him there if he wants, whatever he wants to do. But 
I have a feeling it'll it'll stay on the feet. And uh, I still favor Feely, though. And so Feely for the win. Feely for the pick. And uh, here we go. Four more to go. This is a very interesting matchup. One I was watching very closely. It was Miller versus Green. And now it's Miller versus Medeiros. Medeiros. So Medeiros, very interesting. You know, he trains with the Diaz brother, brothers. He's even starting to look like a Diaz brother. And uh, he says, you know, people say and, and everybody talks about so much potential in this guy. He's so much potential. Well, when I hear people say, oh, potential, potential, it just means they haven't done shit. You know, it just means they haven't proven anything. Maybe they will, but maybe they won't. And who wants that? That's a gamble. That's not an investment. And that's not what we're in here to do. We're not in here to waste money and throw money out. And, oh, yeah, ha, ha, and this and that. It, we have to win. So, um you know, he's got to, Medeiros has got to show me that he can beat a top guy like Jim Miller. This guy's been around forever. He's been fighting in the UFC since uh, since uh, the Stone Age. I mean, this guy's been around for a very long time, very proven fighter, but also flaky. So you know, we'll see what happens here. But with Miller, to me, he's just like a Wolverine, you know, he's just in there ready to win. I think he even has like a, like a, like a bear, bear tattoo bear claw or like i say it's a wolverine claw because this guy is just just ferocious when he wants to be uh like i say he's a little bit flaky but uh and he can be knocked out so that's the part that i'm just like wow man but miller is very very good with submissions very good jujitsu very good wrestling and um he was supposed to fight green so he should be very prepared for this fight and uh, i'm gonna pick miller here miller for the win possibly by submission Maybe by decision, but um, but minus 200, my gosh, that's too much for Miller at this point. So uh, it's going to be a pass, although this is another one that I was tempted to to bet on because I, I, I do I love what I saw out of Miller against his last opponent, you know, just going in there, focused, but uh, it's just too, too risky, too, too, much, uh, too much risk there. So Miller for the win, but do not bet. And then... Um, Okay, here we go. Rockhold versus Boach. Now, with Tim Boach, we're getting a tough, tough dude. This guy's like a lumberjack, the barbarian, you know, is just a tough guy. And uh, he trains with an awesome coach, Matt Hume. But, you know, uh, just taking a look at the at the the guys he's training with and the guys he's fighting. I mean, imagine if Tim Boach went to AKA or American Top Team, not, not even American Top, let's say he went to Greg Jackson's. Greg Jackson's or uh, AKA, that would be a good fit, I think, for him. But he's not, in, in, and I wish Matt Hume could coach with the, with, the, with the guys that train at AKA or with the guys that train at, at um, Jackson's because I think that's a great group. But unfortunately, you know, he, he's up there and I'm just thinking to myself, wow, you know, he, he's in the class with these people fighting and this and that. And, it, and he doesn't have the, the 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 Daniel Cormier to train with or the Cain Velasquez to train with or, you know, these guys who were just savages. And see, he's a tough guy and, and uh, I really like him, but, you know, he's not going to win this fight, uh, even at those ridiculous odds. You know, Luke Rockhold, he's in there. He's got the overall game, MMA, excellent, excellent MMA game. He's got a very, very good jiu-jitsu. I've talked about, a, about him in the past. Very, very good ground game. It wouldn't surprise me if Rockhold submits Boach. It wouldn't surprise me if Rockhold knocks out Boach. You know, he's got DC as his main training partner right now. And, and uh, he's just he's had a great opportunity here to shine. And hopefully Rockhold doesn't take it to a decision. It wouldn't surprise me because Boach is such a tough guy. And uh, and I think Boach's time's up here. You know, it's going to be a, another loss for Boach, and and Rockhold will uh, will definitely put himself up uh, where he needs to be. And here we go. <laughs> this is where we put the, the whole, turn the homework in and put it to the test. We got an excellent fight. I can't wait for it. It is Anthony Johnson versus Phil Davis. Now let's talk about Johnson first because there's a lot to talk about here. Uh, first is weight issues. You know, we've got a guy who fought at welterweight, who's now fighting at at, uh, at light heavyweight, and uh, you know he's cut from the UFC, fought some subpar competition. His gas tank is not good. His defensive wrestling is not good, and he gets submitted. 
And that is just the recipe that we need for our first betting pick in Phil Davis. Excellent wrestling. Very good control. Excellent submissions. He's fought very good opposition. And he will be the next in line after Gustafson fights John Jones. So, the pick and the bet is going to be Phil, Mr. Wonderful Davis. And I can't wait for this fight. And uh, I think Davis will submit him in the second round. I, that's my prediction. And I hope it's the Anaconda choke because that's my favorite submission. And hopefully that happens. And I expect it to happen. And then the number one pick in the main event. We've got Glover Teixeira versus Johnny Bones Jones. Now, this is an excellent example of what I was rambling on in the beginning of the video and talking about staying disciplined and not letting your heart uh, with predictions, which is very elementary stuff. But you always have to, when you're, when you're investing, I like to call it investing because gambling to me is like, you know, going to the horse races or going to this and that where it's just, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff happens. And, and, uh, and, and when you invest in something, it's something that, that you have knowledge on and you research and you have facts and things to, to back it up. So when you invest in a fighter, you want it to be a fighter that is proven, a fighter that has shown, you know, with the stylistic matchup or with the strengths and weaknesses, just so much that goes into it. Teixeira, he's an awesome guy. He is a great guy. I had the privilege of, of, of uh, meeting him, talking with him for a good while. We watched the fight together. We talked. Uh, this is before, the, he, before he fought Rampage. I was talking strategy with him. And, uh, of course, you know, he's, I didn't, uh, expect him to say like, Oh, you know, think, I mean, I'm sure he's got coaches. He knows guys who, uh, who are very experienced in MMA, but we were talking strategy against this fight with rampage. I mean, just, just a awesome guy. I really, really like this guy. He was one of the first guys to share our, our YouTube videos. And when we, when we put them up on YouTube with the predictions and stuff. And, um, so I really liked him a lot. Uh, but you know, like I said, this isn't about um, the popularity contest. This isn't high school. You know, this is about money and making a profit. And uh, the biggest weakness I see with him is that uh, he's going to be a bit too slow for, for John Jones. And he's going to be a little bit too flat-footed for John Jones. Um, his striking defense, you know, it's going to be, it's not going to be enough to, to stop John Jones. I wish I could say it was, you know, I wish I could say, oh, yeah, baby, woo we're betting now farm on Glover and he's going to win, but his striking defense, you know, Ryan Bader almost knocked him out. And I know Glover didn't take that fight as seriously as he should have, but still, you know, Ryan Bader should not be laying hands on you like that ever. And, uh, and his cardio, you know, he also slows down. He also slows down and that's not a good, that's all those things are big. That's one, two, three strikes and you're out. And with John Jones, we got this guy coming off a very controversial fight. You know, I'm sure this guy, uh, you know, I sometimes when I'm doing my, my uh, actually a lot of times recently when I'm doing my, my predictions and my bets, I get this stress thing around my neck and my back and I get a headache and, and, uh, and I'm sure John Jones has had all those things and more, you know, after that win over Gustafson and people talking so much shit to him and saying, oh, you know, this and that and and uh you know just, just people feeling like he he doesn't deserve to be the champ and uh john jones he's not a very likable guy you know he, he he's faking it a little bit now you know shaking everybody's hand like dc says thinking he's a president you know hey whoa, whoa, whoa thank you welcome to my show and everything and but john jones has the skills to pay the bills i mean this guy can do it all stand up wrestling offensively and defensively i mean this guy is just a wizard and uh, I mean, I don't think we're going to see anybody dethrone him. And even when he moves up to heavyweight, you know, that's going to be one hell of a fight for Cain Velasquez. And he'll probably be the champ still then. So John Jones for the win here. He'll probably finish Teixeira in the third or fourth round. Third or fourth, uh, that's my prediction. John Jones for the win. And that wraps it up. So let's move ahead to the, the, the bets. 
So we got a couple of three-star bets. They're going to be medium-sized plays. That's going to be Jones versus Davis. And um, and the reason they're going to be three stars is because, like I said, I want to be super disciplined, super, super. It's going to be very difficult for a guy to make it to the three-star, four-star, five-star range. It's going to be very difficult for them. No more of these guys who who don't show up, you know, who don't uh, do what they need to do. Uh, I have zero patience for that if I'm investing my time and my money into this, it's not going to be for guys who who uh, don't show up and don't have a proven track record. So that takes care of that. And for the bets, we're going to go with one unit equals 1% of the bankroll. So we got Johnny Bones Jones at minus 500 and Phil Davis at minus 215. You might be able to get him a little bit better or you might be able to get him a little bit worse, but those are the, line, those are the numbers we got here. And that equals minus 132. So we're going to go ahead and put five units on that to win 3.79. And then we're going to take Phil Davis at minus 215, four and a half units to win 2.10. John Jones inside the distance at minus 155, two units to win 1.29. And we're going to take uh, Phil Davis inside the distance at plus 155. We're going to put half a unit. To win 0.78 units. So that gives us a total of 12 units to win 7.96. So that sums it all up. I cannot wait till these fights take place and we put all this work and all this knowledge and all of this fight footage and everything to the test I am very optimistic and I'm expecting a uh, a very productive and very profitable night and uh, and that sums it up now if you're watching this after the fights check out our website mmadawgs.com guarantee profit or you get that you get your refund for for the for the uh, predictions and you get the next card for free so we're putting it all on the line there no games no frills none of that and uh let's get this show on the road baby like burt watson starts screaming let's go baby yeah i'm not gonna scream but, but you guys get, yeah let's go baby Woo, yeah so uh i hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and i will see you real soon nobody likes to lose so be done letting that money burn its way through your pockets. Slow down. Get ready. We are so confident that you will profit from our picks that if you don't, we will refund your money and give you the next card on us. In order to profit in the long run, it's important to be consistent with our picks. Rome wasn't built in a day and neither was Vegas. MMADogs.com. Profit. Guaranteed. M-M-A.